I'm on my second load of compost. I've been mixing a lot of soil up because we are expanding our garden some more. I spent yesterday doing this as well for our okra bed, which we just got completed. But this is going to be for our roselle. Yesterday I put a bunch of feed bags down and got, I want to say it was probably four different loads of soil mixture and when Sid got home last night he was able to get these okra planted in and coming this way I get distracted at this beautiful flower that's a pretty zinnia I spent this morning putting cardboard down here and this is two loads of dirt so far I've got four more to go and I'll kind of even it out but this is where we want to have kind of like a living wall of the roselle look how fast this tromboncino is growing it is prolific I mean this is just one area we've got some over here on this side it is just growing fast I'm really appreciating our overhead area because I just back my truck up and this is where I'm doing my mixing for the bags that I have I'm doing one bag of that potting mix and a bag of the black cow to uh, two to three buckets of the compost that I've been pulling in from the field. Um, it's easier for me to mix it in that small batch because looking at this, it's just a good amount. I just kind of like put it in layers, mix it as I go, and then wet it down. And for me, it's just easier doing section by section and mixing it right because I'm, I'm a little person. I can't, uh, Sid, he'll do like these huge batches and I just don't have the strength to mix it like he does. But this really works for me. got one more load to go so I'll finish off here and then just put it sparingly just to thicken up this layer because it's just about all the way to the end so I'll just be filling some low spots with that load you guys aren't supposed to be over here and y'all know it go on Uh-uh. Go. I don't like them over here on this walkway. They just poop. They know better. Our wild ducks, those three stooges I'm calling them, um, have been trying to mate with them, and so they've been scared of them. So that's part of my drama. Keeping these three stooges away. Those guys aren't doing their job keeping them away. Little stinkers. I just saw them doing that in the wrong spot. Because I'm headed out to get my last two buckets of compost. This is day three of our Top Gun crew free ranging and they've been doing really, really well. They like to stay relatively close to wherever I am when I'm outside. We've got some whistling ducks. 
that have decided to hang out with our group. Um, I've seen them off and on over the past few weeks. But I've also been seeing these snakes. <laughs> but those whistling ducks, they're pretty cool looking with that orange beak. They just pop in sporadically and they seem to get along with the geese and our crew. So I have filled up 12 of these buckets today. I want to say I started around 10.30. It's like 2 o'clock right now. But I've been taking breaks because it's pretty hot here. We're in the 80s right now here in Texas. <laughs> What's up, babies? Every time I come over here, they want to visit. They think I need to give them something. Little beggars. The little beggars. So cute. Got my little lawn mowers. Finally chewing grass around the pond. You see how they're pretty chill around me? They don't usually get too bad. It's okay, babies. Watch out, baby. All right. You're fine. You're fine. That little baby is nine weeks old. That's the only one I've hatched and raised out here. Y'all being nosy? Y'all being nosy? I've got some olive eggers in here and some naked necks. I hatched out those naked necks and the olive eggers I got from my friend Curtis at Webfoot Farms. And they're getting so big. They're only a week different, so the naked necks just take a little bit longer to get bigger. Another little project I'm working on, I'm starting to prepare as I get ready to finish um, filling the last load of dirt is coming back to the squash. We were noticing that some of the leaves were yellowing. So I'm gonna prepare a mixture to hopefully just kind of like help any issues out. I haven't really noticed it on anything else yet, but I'd rather get ahead of it. I'm only really noticing it on some of these squash plants. Got a messy work site over here. Um, but I'm gonna add some chelated iron. It says about one quart for every 10 gallons, one to three. So I think that's what I'm going to do um, and also do the fish emulsion fertilizer. And for this one, it'll be, um, I want to say like 32 tablespoons is the ratio uh, for that big because it's a 32 gallon. So I'm going to have to sit and uh, get that mixed up for a drench tonight.
the space that we have designed is only going to allow me to plant 10 of these. So I am choosing the healthiest of the 10, the healthiest looking. In the space that we're going to be planting this, it's about a 30 foot bed. The minimum amount of feet that you want to have in between them is between three to five feet. So I'm going to cram as many as I can into the space. So I'm going to put 10 plants in the 30 foot space. And my objective is to have a bit of a dense wall. Um, and I know this is, it is a perennial plant in some zones. I know in the freezes that we have here it's going to disappear and I do plan to continue having it saving the seeds and having this kind of be the area for this plant in a perennial type plan. One might ask why do I want to grow roselle? Why is that so important to me? For some the term hibiscus is more familiar Jamaican roselle is another familiar term, but roselle is a plant commonly grown for its edible calyx, which are used to make herbal jams and jellies, sauces, and, and much more. There are several reasons why someone would choose to grow it. There's culinary uses, medicinal benefits, ornamental, and because it is, it is a beautiful plant. It's exotic looking. When I grew it for the first time last year, many people would stop and ask like, what is that? Because it's so pretty. It's sustainable agriculture because it's relatively low maintenance and it doesn't require a lot of water. And we're in Texas, so this is a great plant for us to actually grow. It feels good to actually get all of those into the ground because I was a little stressed. I did up pot them. I wanted to secure the health of those plants. Last year, the roselle, hibiscus, however you want to call it, it brought me joy learning uh, about them and the entire process of preserving them. And so that's something I really want to do this year. All I have left is to go ahead and fertilize, put uh, that mix that I prepared earlier onto the garden and water. I'm not going to do a heavy water because we are supposed to have a rainy weekend. So I kind of just want to do the um, fertilizer, a light watering, and then I'm going to just call it done after that. I recently did a worm casting update video about how it did benefit our garden and then this is just going to be an extra boost that I'm going to be doing now. I'll put that video off to the side and in the show notes below. Until the next time, thanks for joining me.